athletes, I feel like they're not sure if Herschel should fly the plane. <laughs> well, so let's take you through the, where things stand in terms of the battle for the Senate right now. Remember, came into yesterday at 50-50 in the Senate. That was good enough for the Democrats to control it with Kamala Harris's tie. The big change so far has been in Pennsylvania. It's a Democratic gain. What that means with the rest of the map is there's three Democratic held seats, Georgia, mm -hmm. Arizona, Nevada, and there's one Republican held seat, Wisconsin, all uncalled. The lead for Ron Johnson, the Republican in Wisconsin, sits just north of 30,000 votes. There are some Democratic votes still to come out of Milwaukee, out of Madison. There are some Republican votes to come from elsewhere. So just for the sake of argument, if you say that Johnson hangs on there, if he doesn't, that's ball game for the Senate. But if you say that Johnson hangs on there for the sake of argument, then it's going to leave Georgia, Arizona, Nevada, and a question of can Republicans win two out of those three? That's what they would need to get the Senate. Otherwise, Democrats hold it. And if you just take a look at where those three stand at this morning. Here we are in Georgia. Raphael Warnock with an 18,000 vote advantage over Herschel Walker. There are still some votes to come in. You can see there are not about 96% of the estimated vote. Our decision desk has not touched this, has not called this. I, say, I could say that the Secretary of State's office in Georgia last night publicly tweeted that they are preparing for a runoff in this race. Because, again, nobody gets to 50%. They would go to a runoff. That would be on December 6th. Very possible that neither Warnock nor Walker finish with 50. This goes to a runoff to be determined uh, on December 6th. Then you take a look at Arizona. You're talking about this one. The big development overnight is in the biggest county of the state, which is Maricopa County. Maricopa County appears to have completed counting all of its same-day vote. If you were watching these votes uh, as they came in last night, initially Mark Kelly and Maricopa had an advantage north of 20 points. It's now fallen to about 8 points. That's the effect of having all of that same-day vote counted in. What remains in Maricopa County, and this can sometimes be a days-long process, ballots dropped off in the final few days before the election and on Election Day. They'll release them in nightly batches in Maricopa County. But you can see this is critical. I think the lead that Mark Kelly has, excuse me, the lead that Mark Kelly has statewide is 107,000. Okay, mm -hmm. now in the 2020 presidential election, when turnout was higher, when we reached this comparable point overnight, Maricopa same day counted. The advantage that uh, Joe Biden had in the state was 110,000 votes. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and it came down about 100,000. So. That, was, that is in a higher turnout atmosphere, though. So it, given that the turnout is down and Kelly's lead is sitting close to 110,000 as well, I think, again, there's no characterization from our decision desk, but that's a pad there that Democrats are probably feeling pretty optimistic about. And it makes the difference between the Senate race, 107,000 vote lead for the Democrat there, and the governor's race, where Katie Hobbs has gone through the same set of votes now that we just talked about and is, only, is ahead by 70,000 fewer almost. That is prime uh, uh, striking distance for Carrie Lake with the vote is, that is still to be counted, at least potentially. So that's going to be the story the next couple days. Based on what we saw in 2020, that final vote that was counted up was Republican friendly. If it were to be that Republican friendly again, it would be Lake might be in a good position, but Masters might be falling short. But that's a big question here. What does that vote look like? Does it look different than 2020? If Republicans fail to get Arizona, then they absolutely need to get Nevada. You're looking at the governor's race here, but let's just call the Senate race up. And again, the development overnight here in the Senate race is that Adam Laxalt actually took the lead in the count over Catherine Cortez Masto. Now, what is left to be counted in uh, Nevada? Primarily two things here. Late arriving, like dropped off day of, drop box vote in Clark County and in Washoe County. We're trying to get a handle on exactly how many ballots that means to be counted in those places. Is it enough for Cortez Masto to overcome a 22,500 vote deficit and win this race? You look at the governor's race, the Democratic governor down about 40,000 votes, so notably a difference between the two of those. But essentially, I think what, that, what we're looking at here, uh, this is governor, what we're looking at here is this. Let me just call this up. If Johnson hangs on here, if this goes to a runoff, all right, now, just for the sake of argument, if Democrats hang on to the Senate seat in Arizona, and for the sake of argument, if Laxalt hangs on in Nevada, what that would add up to is 50 <clears throat> Republican, 49 Democrat, 
and a runoff in Georgia that would determine control of the Senate on, on December 6th. And conversely, if Cortez Masto is able to, in the remaining votes, overtake Laxalt, and that actually stays Democratic, then the runoff in Georgia would still proceed, but Democrats would have control of the Senate no matter what. So I think a lot mm -hmm. is resting on understanding exactly what that remaining vote is in Nevada, and if indeed there is enough there for Cortez Masto to overtake Laxalt and give Democrats an outright win there. So I, I, I'm curious, um, we, um, John Rawlson had talked about, uh, he believed there were a lot of uh, mail-in votes still coming in in Clark County. Uh, and if they break two to one uh, for Cortez Masto, uh, then that, that could put her ahead. Do we, do we know, are there 100,000 mail-in votes in Clark County still outstanding? That, that's what we're trying to get a hold of. It, it would be Clark and then to a lesser degree, but not insignificant, Washoe County, where Reno is. Those two counties combined are 90 percent of the state. And that is the question right now that we're trying to get a handle on, exactly how many outstanding ballots are there. And then, as I say, there is that question, same question we have in Arizona is, are they going to break because yeah, in Arizona, what we found in 2020 was that there was a big difference in terms of the votes, the, the early votes, the mail votes that were dropped off early on versus the ones that were dropped off at the last minute. The ones that were dropped off at the last minute were much more Republican in character than the ones that were returned early. That's why Trump made up a lot of ground in the final days of the vote count in Arizona in 2020. Not enough to win the state, mm -hmm. but enough to make it close. So there's a question there in Arizona and I think in Nevada as well of what the character of the remaining vote would, would be, the political character of it would be. So that's what we're trying to figure out. There could certainly be enough for Cortez Masto to overtake Laxalt. Laxalt did have a, a pretty good overnight just in terms of putting himself in contention here. So I think it's, it's the biggest wild card here. There's an opportunity. There's a clearer opportunity for Democrats, I think, right now, uh, excuse me, for Republicans in Nevada than there is in Arizona for their Senate candidate to get that pickoff. They're going to need to get one of those two. Then they're going to need to force Georgia into a runoff and win Georgia. That would be the Republican path to Senate control right now. Anything short of that. Could still have a Georgia runoff, but it wouldn't matter. Democrats would have the Senate. All right, Steve, thank you. And we're going to